Bye. Bye-bye. There you are. <laughs> I made it. Yay. Okay, so just gonna, make, just gonna make sure Melanie got hers. So so my job is gonna be to manage your QA. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but I've got that pulled up and then I've also have a chat pulled up. So if people are chatting, um if when you pause if you're like are there any questions i can read you the questions that people have asked and i will okay. actually turn my video off so that people will pay attention to you and then you can also do screen share just like with a normal zoom oh i don't like my hair my hair's being stupid today. okay melanie said she didn't get it so can i can i just forward mine to her i don't know if it'll work or not but let me let me command tab and let me go back here and try this again. It, it's being persnickety. Um, my account. And I've got G-A-R-R-A-B-R-A-N-T mm -hmm. dot three, four at mm -hmm. mail dot C-O-T-C dot E-D-U. Yes. Are, is it two R's? Are you sure? G-A-R-R-A-R-R-A. B as in boy. Yep. R-A-N as in Nancy, T as in Tom dot right. three, four. Gara Brandt. Dot three four at mail.cotc.edu. Yes. Okay. All right. And what is her last name? Her last name is Garbrandt. Her first oh. name is Melanie. Duh. Okay. If I if we see her, I will add her. I'm gonna go ahead and click the start webinar button so that people will be able to start seeing us and joining. Okay, do you want me to forward mine to her just in case she doesn't um, get you yours? can yeah okay. Um, okay yeah if it'll work she's more than welcome. So uh, we do have a couple of people asking, is this gonna be recorded and emailed out by chance? And um, we are recording, but we won't be able to email it. Um, it does, it, these are very large files. And so it does take some time to get them processed and get them uploaded. Um, but yes, we will try to get those out um 
up on YouTube so that they can be shared and, and whatnot. Um, but it does take a little bit to make that happen. Um, We're going to give it just a few minutes as so that people can start trickling in. Did you have many sign up for it? Um, we did actually, we had um, quite a few actually. Um, yeah, and you know what? I can forward you their email information too um, so that they can reach out to you or you can reach out to them. That'd be um, great. But yeah, yeah, we did have quite a few sign up, but um, you know, it's one of those things where I feel like it does this email reminder and sometimes people get it and sometimes people don't. And they're like, oh no. Uh, and I've had more than one mom say, I forgot, uh, which is why <laughs> we do go ahead and record these. But right. um, for those of you that are with us tonight and I'm sure we'll have some others joining, um, we just wanna welcome Tony. Uh, Tony, um, I'm gonna butcher your last name. Uh, okay. So if you, if you could pronounce it, that would be great. Sure, it's Trowbridge. Trowbridge, okay. And Tony is mm -hmm. um, with admissions at COTC and um, Central Ohio Technical College is COTC in case you're not familiar with that. And they are um, local to Newark. And I think they also have a Pataskala campus, Coshocton, maybe Mount mm -hmm. Vernon. Mm -hmm. Look at this, look yep. at this. All right, I'm getting them. Um, but they have several satellite campuses. So they're really central Ohio is a really very accurate name. Um, and my students, um, I have three, one is graduating high school this year. Um, and then I have two more that have graduated already. Um, all three of them have done College Credit Plus through Central Ohio Technical College and had a wonderful experience with it. Um, awesome. My oldest nearly completed a two-year degree. He was within two or three classes while he was still in high school. And my uh, middle child did complete his two-year degree. He actually graduated from COTC at 16 years old. He was your youngest graduate ever when he did it. Now you probably had somebody else 
younger <laughs> since then. He was super jealous because there was somebody coming up behind him that was a few months younger. And he's like, they're going to beat me. But um, he was really happy with that. Um, and then my youngest child um, is actually using COTC. Now there's a way that he is doing this where he's enrolled at COTC. But he's actually taking an EMT course at mm -hmm. CTEC and mm -hmm. College Credit Plus is paying for him to take his EMT course at CTEC. And I was just like, are you freaking kidding me right now? Because we were going to pay for all of this out of pocket and it's super expensive. These EMT courses are. And so I was like, we've got to get these people on here. We've got to explain the magic that is College Credit Plus to homeschoolers. Um, both the, just the benefits of this program, especially for kids that are ready for that kind of work. Um, and I would not say that my kids were super smart kids. My kids were average homeschooling students that had time to put towards doing college work. Um, and uh, they said that I was a harder com composition teacher than your composition teacher was. I will tell you that. <laughs> they came home from composition one and they were like, you are harder than this lady is. You are harder than a college class mom. And I was like, oh, well, I was doing my best. <laughs> so you prepared um, them well. <laughs> right, that's right. Like should be easy to get an A then, right? <laughs> um, but we've just had a great experience. And so we're hoping that you can share with us tonight some of the parameters. Um, there's always guidelines around programs like this, um, how families and parents can get signed up, where they can get more information and just about your program because you do something really unique in Ohio, which is the two-year transfer guarantee because my kids didn't know in the seventh grade, what they wanted to be when they grew up. But because they were working in this one program that you guys have, it just worked out so beautifully for them um, mm -hmm. that they were basically able to finish the first part of their degree um, before they even really knew where they wanted to be. So um, hopefully uh, you can share all of that with us tonight. No pressure, Tony, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gonna uh, talk to them then about how to set up the account on the states, through right. the states That's side, right. okay? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, then I will share my screen here. Um, my, my screen share is disabled. Oh, um, let me see. All panelists, try it again. Ha ha. ha. Okay. All right. So welcome everybody. I'm excited to share the information with you. Um, kind of a hard act to follow there because that was some pretty awesome success stories that um, Amanda shared. So, but I will definitely give the, the information. It's a lot to absorb. So please don't feel, um, don't hesitate at all to start asking questions um, in the chat feature. Um, if, if you have questions, we will take a break here and answer some questions and then move on. To begin with, what is College Credit Plus? It is Ohio's dual credit program where students can earn high school and college credit at the same time. Students enroll in college courses and adhere to the policies and requirements of the college. Students in grades seven through 12 can participate, must be Ohio residents attending an Ohio secondary public or private school or receive homeschooling instruction. You can apply to any Ohio public college or participating Ohio private college or an approved out of state college. Students can apply to multiple college colleges and we do see that. Uh, students must complete an assessment exam to be determined eligible based on the exam scores for College Credit Plus. I'm going to mention here now, and you'll see it again in a little bit, due to the COVID situation, the state had waived the test uh, exam for the 2021 academic year. They're also continuing that for the 21-22, so that there won't be exams that have to be taken unless you have um, below a 3.0 unweighted GPA. And, and we'll kind of mention that again here in just a little bit. 
Students can choose from a variety of college level courses. Of course, you have to make sure that it's determined by your placement testing or the course eligibility rules. Students can earn credit to satisfy both high school and college requirements. Three or more credit hour college course converts to one high school unit. Students uh, must successfully complete the courses in order to earn the credit. Even if a student fails or withdraws from a course, that college transcript and high school transcript will reflect the final grade. Students can take classes during summer, fall, and spring and they may take courses at their high school if it's a partnering high school on college campuses or online. To be eligible for College Credit Plus, um, I mentioned the exam scores, but that has been waived. So it's a 3.0 unweighted GPA or higher. If, that, if, if the student doesn't have that, then we will, um, they can take the, an assessment exam. The reason for the exams is to show that they are college ready for different courses in a, in a subtest. Um, there's a list of exams there. I'm not going to go kind of into detail. The first three are the most popular, and each college and university may have different exam requirements. The colleges and universities will review your scores using the statewide standards. Um, if a student's scores are not college level, then they can consider the exam score if the scores are within a specified range. And I do have a slide here coming up a little bit later that will show that. And if the student has that 3.0 GPA. But again, this has been, been waived by the state. Um, they can also participate if they have a recommendation form or letter from their high school counselor, principal, or career tech advisor. And here's the part where it says we are. Um, for the 21-22 academic year, they are continuing that flexibility where we will allow um, students with a 3.0 unweighted GPA to participate in College Credit Plus. So for the college part of this, students must apply for admissions to the college, meet the admissions requirements of the college, contact us, or the college that you choose to learn about your the requirements, processes, paperwork, deadlines, and the colleges do have the final decision on student admission. Once the student is considered eligible and has been admitted to the college, then the college representatives will discuss course options with the student based on the assessment scores, any course prerequisites, and any possible other requirements that might be needed. Courses, CCP courses satisfy, can satisfy high school graduation requirements. It, the school counselors can help students understand those requirements and CCP course substitutions. Some high schools do have more requirements for graduation than what the state minimum requirements are. Students must complete their first 15 credits in level one courses, which include transferable courses, courses in IT, computer science, anatomy and physiology, or foreign language, courses that are part of a technical certificate, courses that are part of a 15 or 30 credit pathway, and courses in study skills, academics, or success or career success. The colleges do need to post their uh, level one courses. You can see their websites for different for details. Once a student completes the first 15 credit hours in level one, he or she can move on to level two courses. Those courses are any other allowable college course for which the student meets the prerequisites. There are some non-allowable courses. Those include private applied courses with one-on-one -on -one instruction, a lot of times seen in the performing arts, courses with higher fees, study abroad, physical education, pass fail, and remedial and religious courses. For the grades, College Credit Plus grades earned in the court, college course is the same grade that will be on your high school transcript. CCP course grades will be factored into your high school and college GPA. 
If a high school uses a weighted grading scale for advanced placement, international baccalaureate or honors courses in a subject area, then the college credit plus course in that same subject area will be weighted using the same scale. Students should consider courses in a career pathway that interests them. They should ask Ask about pathways that identify courses leading to a major or degree requirement. And a lot of times your advisor at the college is going to ask you what kind of things you're interested in and what you think you want to do whenever you graduate from high school. Students can take college credit plus courses in subject areas that will satisfy their graduation requirements. They must work with their school counselors to ensure you're meeting any mandatory testing and other high school graduation requirements. How many classes can a student take? They can be enrolled in up to 30 credit credits per year, which includes the high school courses. So for example, if you start out with your 30 credits and you're taking five high school classes, five times three is 15, that leaves you with 15 credits that you could use as CCP classes. Maximum number of credits allowable for a student while participating in the CCP program is 120. So non-public and private school students must apply for College Credit Plus funding every year. And this was what um, I mentioned Amanda is going to talk on here after a bit. Families must establish their Ohio ID and request access to the CCP funding application. They must complete the entire CCP funding application by the deadline. I would also mention, um, I know they, a new, um, acceptance letter or letter of, of good standing is required each year whenever you apply for your funding. Approximately five weeks after the deadlines, funds will be awarded to families with completed applications in the form of credit hours. The number of credit hours a student is awarded is the maximum number a student can enroll with state funds. The funds are limited and students may not be awarded all credit hours that the student and family has requested. They're distributed based on student grade level. So they start with the seniors awarded first, then juniors and so on until all the funds are, have been awarded. <clears throat> students must provide a copy of the funding award letter which courses. This is considered option B. Option B is the default option for College Credit Plus. Students will earn both college credit and high school credit. Students must be awarded enough credits for the entire college course. If there was a not enough credits awarded for the entire course, the family must pay for that course. So for example, if you were awarded four credit hours and you wanna take two, three credit hour classes, you would have to pay for that full three credit hour class. You couldn't use the one credit towards the three credit hour class. Paying for the course that exceeds the funding award is considered option A. Op under option A, the student and family must work directly with the college to arrange and make payment. And I'll kind of touch on COTC's um, process for that here in just a little bit as well. Option A allows the student to choose to earn both college credit and high school credit, or they can earn only college credit. Option A must be elected at the time the student registers for the courses and must they must inform the college and secondary school of electing option A and which credits the student wants to earn, whether they wanna earn just college or if they want the college and high school credit. So some differences between high school and college, or maybe at the end of a chapter, whereas in college, they're generally fewer in number and cover more material. A lot of the time you might have one or two midterms and then a final. So those college, those tests are gonna be worth a lot more points. Study time in high school, your required homework ranges between one and three hours per day. In college, the standard rule of two to three hours of homework for every hour spent in class is considered study time, so three to five hours a day. Knowledge acquisition, high school information is provided mostly in class and out of class research is minimal. 
However, at the college level, the coursework will generally require more independent thinking, longer writing assignments, and a more out of class research. Grades, high school has numerous quizzes, tests, and homework assignments. However, in college, like I mentioned, there's usually only two or three tests and fewer, if any, homework assignments. Some classes do also have some quiz grades in there. The role of the parent is also different um, for the college student. In the high school, parents are strong advocates working closely with the teachers and counselors, whereas in college, the parent serves as a mentor and a support for the student. The college views the student as an independent decision maker. This includes the seventh graders, so the younger students. Um, at the college, the Family, Rights, Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, protects the student education records. However, there are usually documentation that um, students can complete to allow parents to be able to call in and talk with their advisor on their behalf. And we do encourage um, students to do that as well. Accommodations at the high school, the parents and students work with the high school staff to determine the assistance and accommodations um, and what can, can be done to help with students with IEPs or 504s. At the college, the students will work directly with the college staff to determine what type of accommodations uh, might be needed. Um, IEPs, 504 plans may or may not be included in those discussions with the college. Um, we do tell students if you do have those, please self-identify to us so that we can connect you with the, the appropriate folks. Students can earn high school and college credit at the same time. This is a benefit. Um, they can get a head start on career planning and degree or certificate completion. Amanda gave three very good examples there at the beginning and experience college early to understand the expectations of college life. And another benefit is saving on the cost of tuition and textbooks. Consequences of underperforming. If students do not earn a passing grade or if they would withdraw too late from college courses, the non-public school may require students and families to reimburse the tuition that the state had paid. The school will then submit the reimbursement to the state. Grades that student earns will be on the college, student's college transcript permanently. Um, and then there is a note there, if the student is considered economically disadvantaged, a school may not seek re reimbursement. If a student fails or withdraws often, future financial aid may also be impacted negatively. Um, for more information, contact the college's financial aid office for details on how um, future financial aid may be impacted. If students perform poorly, they may be placed on CCP probation, CCP dismissal, or on academic probation or dismissal by the college. So talking about the College Credit Plus probation, student will be placed on CCP probation if he or she earns less than a cumulative 2.0 GPA in CCP courses or withdraws from two or more courses in one academic term. While on probation, they may only enroll in one College Credit Plus course for one college term. So either a semester or a quarter, depending on what the college follows. They may not enroll in the college course in the same subject in which the student previously earned a D, F, or an NC grade or equivalent. Students would be placed on CCP dismissal if while they're on CCP probation, they do not increase their CCP GPA to a 2.0 or above during the probation term. They'll be placed on the dismissal at that point. While on dismissal, students may not enroll in any College Credit Plus courses. Students can request an appeal to be reinstated to the program, and that appeal goes through their school. CCP probation students may appeal to take a course in the same subject area in which he or she previously earned a D or an F or received no credit. Again, that appeal does have to go through their school and CCP dismissal within 
five days of being dismissed, the student may submit an appeal to the secondary school to appeal the dismissal, or the student may appeal at the end of the CCP dismissal semester. Each school must have their own policy describing the, the process for appeals, and that's each high school. So the expenses for College Credit Plus, at public colleges and universities, there will be no cost to students and families for tuition, required fees, and books. Private school families must apply for state funding, and any course that exceeds the state funding is the financial responsibility of the family. At private colleges or universities, there'll be no cost to the students or families for tuition, required fees and books, and students may be charged a small cost per credit hour. Check with the private college to see if they will charge this fee. Um, some optional expenses are the responsibility of the student and family. Some examples are parking and transportation. Support services that are available for students are similar to those at the high school. Um, high school counselors will continue to provide assistance to all college credit plus students. The advisors will provide course selection and assistant selection assistance at the college. Colleges must provide the same academic supports. So tutoring, library access, advising, um, different, um, different supports to help the student be successful in the classroom. Student athletes should um, make sure that they are familiar with Ohio High School Athletic Association requirements. Summer term classes do not count towards um, bringing the student into compliance with the OHSAA requirements for the interscholastic athletic participation. Certain general education and technical courses will transfer, um, especially one, one with colleges to confirm those transfer abilities. So in other words, if you're taking a class at COTC, but you know you're going to transfer to Ohio State, it's up to Ohio State how that class transfers in to them. So make sure you're checking with those um, schools where you know you want to go, if you know where you want to go, um, just to make sure that what you're taking with us will transfer and how it will transfer. Typically, um, students try to take mostly um, OTM and TAG courses so that they do have the, the transferability with them. Uh, you can also visit the transfercredit.ohio.gov for more transfer information. What does it mean to be college ready? College ready is more than just being academically ready. Um, you must consider the emotional and social transition and the actual college expectations. Consider time management and organizational skills. Is this a student that you constantly have to, to stay on to get their work done or are they pretty um, self-driven? Grades earned in a CCP course are for high school and college credits. And that's one that we can't stress enough. So that grade will be calculated into both GPAs. College credit plus uh, credits will be utilized in the calculation of financial aid after high school as well. So the deadlines um, by April 1st, the private school families must complete the electronic, complete the electronic intent to participate in funding application check ACT and SAT testing dates. Um, that is uh, not gonna necessarily be required depending on where you go. Check with the college and university where you plan to attend. That for state purposes, the testing has been waived. Um, check college application dates. Each college may have different application deadlines. Students uh, must have an acceptance letter from the college to apply for that funding. And summer semester deadlines will likely be early as classes usually start in May. How do you get started? Apply for admission at the college of choice before the deadline. That way you get your acceptance letter. Contact the college, discuss assessment testing requirements, start the funding process early and submit the application by the deadline. Meet with your school counselor to discuss scheduling and graduation requirements. 
that is what I'm going to cover for the state portion of it. What questions do we have so far? All right, so we do have a few questions. Okay. Um, the first one is, um, I wonder if you can address this sometime during the night. Is there a way to enroll a younger student who is profoundly gifted currently working at a high school level in many subjects? And I guess my, my response to that is as homeschoolers, we are not necessarily bound by the same, um, not everybody in the seventh grade is 11 or 12 years old um, when you homeschool. You might have kids that are in the seventh grade that are 13, or you might have kids that are um, a little bit younger than that. And so um, my experience with the state of Ohio has been that you can apply for funding in your seventh grade year, but whatever year you establish as your seventh grade year, that is your seventh grade year. So once you've established with the state of Ohio, then you have seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. So it's the you know that's all you have left. Um, so if you decide to say my younger child who is not really quite old enough for seventh grade technically through like a public school model is a seventh grader, th that's up to you. But once you've established that with the state, you will only get. Um, five more years or six more years of funding. Like you're setting the date. And so once you set the date, you can't change your mind later and change it. Now the colleges, especially with a younger student are probably gonna require those AccuPlacer tests. They're gonna wanna meet with you. And like she was saying earlier, there are other considerations beyond just are they able to do the academic schoolwork? Um, one of the really lovely things about COTC's program is we were able to complete almost an entire two-year um, Associates of Science online. So my student did not have to go in, um, and this was pre-COVID, uh, did not have to go in. There were a couple of history classes that were not able to be completed online. Um, maybe There was maybe four classes total out of a two-year degree, 60 credits um, that could not be completed online. And as a mom, when my kids started, I think they were 13, 12 or 13, I was very concerned about their safety and their maturity level in a classroom with adults. And so um, I just wanted to, personally, I just felt a lot safer having them at home doing that schoolwork online where I could be looking over their shoulder and making sure, um, you know, you're not getting anything inappropriate. There's, there's some safeguards, extra safeguards there. Um, so, uh, but yeah, did you have any uh, anything beyond that? Just it really would kind of be up to admissions to evaluate right, right. Um, I, whether they were capable of that level of work. Correct. At. But the AccuPlacer is not an intimidating test. Um, and, it, and if your child is working at that level, uh, they'll be able to, I think they'll be able to do it. So yeah. Um, what, did you agree with that? I know I totally took over and answered that question, but it's a homeschool question. <laughs> nope. I promise you it is. <laughs> nope, that is perfectly fine. And, and I agree. All right. Wholeheartedly. All right. Um, okay, so we have another one. Um, it is also a homeschool question. Uh, for funding, do homeschoolers get allotted the same, allocated the same funding as public school kids? And the answer to that is they are not only not funded the same, but they're funded out of two different funding streams. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in more in depth. Um, so we'll come back to you. And then I don't know the answer to this one. Um, is there an option to just audit a class? There is an option to audit classes, um, but it is on an availability basis. And that's going to be dependent on each institution. Okay. So maybe. Possibly. Yeah. That's the, that's the <laughs> answer. <laughs> and you, you really are going to want to follow up with the school the where school. you want to go to school at to find out if that's going to be, because that's going to definitely be different school to school. Um, my initial response to that question would be no. I, I don't think um, my kids were ever uh, 
that I don't think that was ever an option that they were presented with, but maybe. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Are there any other uh, questions? Oh, hold on. I've got to scroll down a little bit. (laughs) All right. So if a student is taking a science class online, say biology or chemistry, how are the labs done? Um, That is a really good question. Um, Would you like to answer that? Sure. You want me to, okay. Sure. (laughs) Generally speaking, the biology and chemistry classes are not offered online. However, during COVID they have been. Um, and it's the labs have been, they've been doing those classes through Zoom. So students do have to log in at set days and times. And this is for COTC. I can't speak for the other, other colleges. Um, they log in at set days and times for a live lecture and for also the lab section of it. Some of the, the experiments or um, assignments, they do have the ability to do from home at times, it just depends on on what it is. Yeah, um, we did environmental science at home. And we were able to order a kit that came mm-hmm. to our house. And that was part of their school books. And then the kids um, did the experiments and they had to take pictures. And a lot of them were these like long experiments over like a month. I remember we had to get pond water and we happened to have a pond, but someone had to wade and get pond water for one of the experiments. And then we had to watch this experiment for a long time. So um, a portion of your house will be turned into a science lab. Uh, That's what we did. (laughs) That is one of the classes that, that we do offer online through COTC completely for a science lab class. Yeah. Okay. So do you want me to go ahead and talk about the, um, do you want me to go ahead and talk about the online? The funding? The safe? The application? Yeah, the application. Um, it, I can go on and, and talk COTC specific if you'd like. Um, we're, we're still, uh, we're kind of still at the vague level. Let's, let's hit the, how to set this up. Cause there's some technical things and then let's hit the COTC piece. Okay. Is Do you want me to important? stop sharing? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to, um, the Ohio safe, uh, website and I'm going to start sharing my screen so that you can see what this looks like. So um, this is the Ohio Safe website. And I just have to tell you, if you uh, are asking questions during this portion, I can't see those questions and also share this with you. So I will come back. Now, all I've done so far is on the very first page, it says something about sign in here. And I signed in because I have an account. If you don't have an account, you will have to create one, Um, but I, I have an account, so I went ahead and signed in. Um, And it's not super hard to create an account, but it does require your driver's license because this is through the state of Ohio. So this is the first screen it's gonna show you once you signed in, there's my name, there's my other name, uh, and there's my email. And I'm just gonna click, there's the dashboard, I'm gonna click sites and applications. Once I go here, it's gonna show me some options for the sites and applications that I have um, access to. Now, this very first one is College Credit Plus. Um, If you are setting up stuff through John Peterson, I believe this is the same website that you use and the same, it's the same spot. But we're doing College Credit Plus, so I'm gonna click on College Credit Plus. When I click on College Credit Plus, then I'm gonna click going to say, are you sure? College Credit Plus. Yes, I'm sure. Launch. Um, and it's going to launch College Credit Plus. And so here you can see it's showing my students' names, Mason and Marshall. And this is just, it's only showing the last few years because they did switch over to a 
a new system a few years ago that's more secure. Um, but you can see here that we have uh, Mason was awarded credits in 1819, 1920, and 2021. And Marshall graduated in 1819, and here are the credits he was awarded. So to answer your question about credits, in this year, Marshall, 1819, Marshall was a senior, and he asked for 30 credits, and he was awarded 12. And Mason was a sophomore, and he asked for 30 credits, and he was awarded four. So when you're looking at these amounts understand that you are not going to be awarded at the same um, rate necessarily as the public school, but maybe you are because as a sophomore or earlier in our local public school, the students are not allowed to take college credit plus classes. Their school guidance counselor will not let them sign up for college credit plus classes they tell them, no, you still have to complete all these other classes first. And if you can complete all these other classes, then you can sign up for College Credit Plus. So as a sophomore, even in our local public school, Mason probably would not have been able to sign up for very many classes, but he had four credit hours this year and he used those four credit hours. And four credit hours is one college class. Then um, you can see that Marshall got more credits that year. You might be, well, why did Marshall get more? Well, Marshall's the senior. And the way that they award those credits they start with the seniors and they go through all of the kids and all of the kids get four credits and then they go to the juniors and all the juniors get four and all the sophomores get four and all the freshmen get four and all the eighth graders get four and all the seventh graders get four and then they start back at the top and they give all the seniors four and then if they have enough they give all the juniors four well this year they didn't have enough and they keep going down until they run out and they don't have enough to give the whole class credits and they always have some left over. So I would imagine that all of the juniors got eight credits this year. I had a senior and a sophomore, I don't know, but I would say they awarded all of the seniors four more, so they're at eight, and all of the juniors four more, so they're at eight. And they got to the sophomore class and they didn't have enough to go around. So what they do is they go back to the senior class and they do a lottery. And some kids get 12 and some kids get eight, so that they award all of those credits. Because um, Ohio is on a biannual budget, what happens is the first year of the budget, our budget stream for homeschoolers is a million dollars is allotted for homeschoolers to take College Credit Plus. And the first year they have 500,000 and the second year they have 500,000. So the first year they have 500,000 and they spend it, but some of those kids that get awarded credits don't use them. And so all of that money goes back into the pot. So what always happens is the first year they have 500,000 and the second year they have 600,000 because, or more, because a bunch of those kids didn't use their credits and it all got put back in the pot. And just like us, we didn't use four credits. Most classes are three credits. So we only used three. So one of our credits went back in the pot um, on that year. So then the next year, which would have been the 1920 year, if that's the second year in the biannual budget and there's more money to go around. So here Mason was a junior and he got 16 credits because they were able to go through four, 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 all the levels and they went through multiple times so that he got 16 credits that year. And then this year, we're back to the first year of the budget. He got 16 credits this year. Um, so just every, so next year you'll be in the second year of the budget. So good for you if you're doing this next year, you have a chance for a little bit more money. Um, but uh, that's how that works. So now I want, if I click view, I want to show you what this looks like. Um, from here, from this page, I can choose what I want to do. Now, it knows that Mason is a senior. And so I think that it is not allowing me to add a new application, but I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to try to here in just a second. Aha. But first, I want to show you what it looks like when I click on this view. Um, so I'm going to go over to this one. This one. No. That one. Ah. That one. There we go. Okay. So um, these first two have all the details about the student, all the details about the parent. But I looked through this earlier before you guys were all online, and it has. Uh, social security numbers and things like that on it. So I'm not gonna show you these two, but you need to make sure once you get to this point of completing your application, you need to make sure that every single tab is filled out 
completely. You have to check every tab. You have to make sure it's completely filled out. So if I go to application, this is my application and it's like, he's a 12th grader. He can't get any more money. Um, this is what it looks like. That's his grade level. This is the hours we requested. Has all of the, this is our school district. That's the college we went to. Okay. And you can see here, I can add multiple colleges and universities. So if we wanna do COTC and then we wanna do Franklin and then we wanna do somewhere else, we can do that. Under award details, um, this is not going to be completed until I get my award back, but I requested 30 hours, we were awarded 16. This documents tab is super important. Over here, it's gonna say, have the three things that you need to upload. When we click on these, you can see that I had to upload each of these into here and it has this tab here. I uploaded his acceptance letter to the college. I uploaded his college transcript and I uploaded the compulsory attendance law excuse letter here from West Messiaen. All three of those things have to be uploaded and submitted before the deadline. And the deadline is May 1st, I think. Um, there are not any flags on this and it just says that it's been awarded and there are not any comments or history. So I'm gonna go back over to here. Here, I'm gonna go back to here. Hmm. I'm gonna go to here. All right, so we've, we've been through these. And I'm gonna try and show you how to create a student and see if it will allow me to create a student. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and click Select Program College Credit Plus. And this is where I am going to search as a parent um, my student's first and last name. I don't have any more students that are using this, but if I had had another student, all of my students' names started with M. So, we're just gonna call this one Max. We're gonna pretend that we have a student. And we're gonna, we're gonna, you can see here, we were looking for this fiscal year, 21, 22, and I'm gonna search and he doesn't exist. So he's not gonna come up. Um, and I'm gonna select, that I want to apply for this. Hmm. I know there's a way. So I'm gonna create a new application. It's right here in blue. Now, I, I promise I'm not actually going to fill this out for this student or apply for any money, but let's just pretend that I had a student that was born March the 4th of 2005. I would have been afraid. And their name is Max. Um, I've, I've got that in. I've done my search. I have no results. So I'm gonna go here and click here to add a new student to the system. Once I click that, and I'm not gonna click it, but once I do click that, it's going to take me right into that screen I already showed you where it has different things that it wants you to upload. Um, I am going to go ahead and click it because it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so it's got all this information that it wants me to do for their social security number and all of this stuff, and I intend to participate. This is the screen I wanted to get you to. When she gave the deadline of the April 1st deadline, and you, need, you have to let them know by April 1st that you intend to participate, this is the screen that you have to click this checkbox right here and then you have to submit this so that they know. And you have to fill in all of this information up here to get this to get your student here. Now, this isn't a real student, so I'm going to click cancel. 
I'm going to delete all this. I didn't actually create him in the system. He doesn't exist. And that that would take me into where I would start uploading those uh, those forms and everything. Um, but like she was saying, April 1st is the deadline for that notice of intent. And you have to have your notice of intent done by then. Once you have your notice of intent, um, and you can do your notice of intent at any time. You don't have to wait until April 1st. You need to get that um, uh, acceptance letter from your college. Now, here's one thing to keep in mind. You do not have to have an acceptance letter from every college that you need, want to attend right up front, as long as you have it from one of the colleges that you want to attend. Um, they have allowed some grace on that. So for example, COTC has a free application process. Now that was the college we wanted to attend, but they were able to turn around our college acceptance letters within a few days. Um, I think maybe a week, so that we were able to have those uploaded pretty quickly. So you need to have your college acceptance letter. You need to have your letter of excusal from your superintendent. So that letter that once you, when you send in your notification every year, you should be getting back your excusal letter from your superintendent and you need to upload that letter. Um, I think I probably have one on my desktop that I could show you. Um, but I'll have to look for it here for just a second and see if I can find it. Um, but it, it's a pretty standard excusal letter. I mean, it's not a, you should know what this looks like. <laughs> um, and you should be making sure that you're getting these back uh, from your school district each year. Um, and this is why, this is one of the reasons why you need to make sure you have that excusal letter each and every year um, from your school district. So here is my excusal letter and I am just gonna real quick. Uh, this is an old one. Um, I'm trying to open it for you, but it's it's being stubborn, so I might not get to. But um, it is super important to have that excusal letter um, to be able to uh, upload. Um, not only that, but they're supposed to send it to you. You really should have it. it. It should not be a big deal to get your excusal letter from your um, district. And and part of the reason why. Uh, you always need to follow up and make sure that you have that excusal letter is so that they um, so that so that you can do things like this. All right, I have figured out how to white out my child's date of birth, which is on this excusal letter that I do not want to share with everybody in the world. And I will go ahead and share this uh, screen with you now. Um, there it is. So um, oh, it wants to only share that. Hmm. Here, we'll share this one instead. There you go. So you can see that's my excusal letter right there. Um, and that, and it, that's what it should look like. It should just be from your superintendent. It should have the date. Um, and you're not going to have the one for next year. It's going to be the one for this year. Um, and it's going to, it should be signed by your superintendent. Mine lovely does not have a signature, but it works. So, um, when you're going to go ahead and turn that in. Uh, and then the last thing that you need is just a transcript. And we're going to talk about that in the next session that we have about how to do a transcript and how to um, make sure that that is uh, up to snuff where it's supposed to be. So um, I think we answered the question about funding. Do, do homeschoolers get allocated the same funding as public school kids? No, it's from a different stream. And yes, you can get about the same amount of funding as a homeschooler. Um, I do know that some, um, some, 
students opt to do an online public school because they can get more funding that way. Um, and we did that for one year, um, but uh, we did not we did not like all the extra things that they wanted from us. So um, we did, that was just not a good fit for us, but I do have friends that that's what they do and they love it. So uh, that's a, that's an option, I suppose. Um, but I mean, I really do think that you can get the same amount of funding just from our experience with public school and talking to friends that are in public school and understanding what their students are going through. Um, the public school students, that funding stream is coming from the public schools. So there isn't a lot of incentive uh, sometimes for them to send a student unless they are truly academically gifted and wanting to do that. Uh, whereas homeschoolers, we kind of control a little bit more of that uh, piece with our children and we can decide, no, I think they're ready for this and uh, go from there. Um, so uh, let's see what other questions we have here. For how long are grades stored? If my kids start at age nine, when she is actually a college student at age 18, will they transfer? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. Do you know the answer to that, Tony? <laughs> Once you start your college transcript, it is an official college transcript for the rest of your life. Forever. It will be there. Forever. That was the answer, forever. Wow. Okay. Um, so, I will say one thing that um, we did not know is that when you have um, your college uh, transcripts and you're, you're going into the, the college and you have your funding, um, you do still enter college as a first year freshman, even after you've done all your college credit plus. So that does not change your eligibility for scholarships going into a college later, and it does not change your eligibility for your uh, federal application for free student aid. FAFSA, hard to say. Um, I always say it wrong, but I think I got it right that time. <laughs> All right, and the next one is, does this only work for public colleges or do any private colleges accept CCP? Um, yes, private colleges do accept this. I actually have a really good friend that her daughter is going to Mount Vernon Nazarene and that's a private college, and they will not pay for any um, Bible classes. So sometimes those private colleges are more like a religious sometimes, and so they have extra uh, things. So they won't pay for those, um, but they will pay for everything else. And her daughter is going to graduate with her four-year degree at the end of high school. Um, and one of the ways that they're doing that is they're using the College Credit Plus but, um, and that we did with my middle son is we paid for something called concurrent enrollment, which is a little bit different than College Credit Plus, um, but it was at a reduced tuition rate. So we were able to do an entire semester for like a thousand dollars, which was amazing. Um, when you think about the, you can't go to a private school for $2,000 a year, you know, you can't go to GCA or something for that price, you know, the local private schools here. So. Um, it was a wonderful, um, it was a wonderful opportunity to be able to do that, um, concurrent enrollment, um, as well as the, um, college credit plus enrollment. Um, if you are awarded a certain amount of credits, say six, and you don't use any at, or all, so you have two left over, do they carry over? No, they don't. <laughs> Uh, the, you, you're awarded each year. Um, I would say um, one of the things that we started doing is we started in the summer because it gave us more time to spread those classes out. So if we were awarded say 16 credits, my students liked to take classes one at a time or two at a time. And by doing those classes in the summer, you get to spread those out. Now, not all kids will tolerate that. Uh, mine did, um, but not all. Uh, will. Are you, are the requested credit hours based on income? Nope. They're not based on your income. Um, they are awarded without uh, prejudice, uh, just based on your grade level. So they do all the 12th graders, then 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and then they start at the top again and keep going down. Um, 
So it's not based on your income. What you're thinking about that's income-based is the federal application for free financial aid or something like that. I screwed it up that time, but it's this application that you do. And um, the application, you do not want to do that while you're a high school student because you will mess up when they start going to college for real after they've graduated. So you, if you just use College Credit Plus now while you're in high school, and then you can do, um, then you can do the rest uh, once they graduate, you can use that free application and get Pell Grants and things like that. Um, and then one more, oh, there are lots of questions. So do I fill out one application for College Credit Plus on the ohio.gov website and then separate applications for each college? Okay, so the application on the Ohio, it's the Ohio Safe website and you can Google Ohio Safe ID and it will pull that up. Um, but the Ohio Safe website, your application, you're creating a new application for your student. When you do that, um, you are applying for funding to you personally because you are the homeschool, like you're a private school, you're the homeschool. Uh, and you do need to make sure you select that, that you're not a public school or anything else, you're a homeschooler. Um, so when you are filling out that application, you are requesting that money from the state of Ohio. So you go through that page where you create your student and you create it, then you have to put in all the details. And at the bottom, you certify, yes, I'm telling you my intent to do this. And then you're gonna go through those pages I showed you the second time where it was like, here's where you upload the letters, here's where you submit. And there is a button there in one of those tabs, I think it's the next to last one where it's like status and my status said awarded, but your status this year would say um, started, like your application was started and you have to click submit to submit it by May 1st. Um, but anyways, that's just, that's just for the state. For each college that you want to attend, you need to go to that college, to their website or talk to somebody at admissions or advising and apply to be ad admitted to that college. And every college has different standards. So COTC, um, they have an open admission policy and they, you take the Accuplacer to find out where you fit into the classes. Um, I know that OSU had a standard a couple of years ago because I haven't looked at them for a while, but they wanted you to have a 28 on your ACTs and meet like four or five other things. So every college has a different standard for their application process. And you have to seek that out yourself and apply. We went through COTC because we really like the two-year transfer guarantee. And that two-year transfer goes to any public college in the state of Ohio as the first two years of their degree. So it, it's just a beautiful thing that even if you wanna go to OSU, um, you can do the first two years um, at COTC and then transfer over or any state college in the state of Ohio. We actually found Eastern Kentucky University was doing the same thing. They would take all the first two years for my one son and then let him continue in his program. So they have reciprocity um, agreements with lots of colleges, whether it's not, not even just COTC and OSU, but lots of colleges, private colleges, public colleges, all throughout the United States. And if you want to know, you kind of have to go to the end goal and work your way backwards. Um, if your child really wants to go to Liberty University, you have to contact Liberty. You need to go to a website called transferology.com and you need to figure out, are these credits going to transfer? What, what can we do? Um, and for us, it is a process, but it is definitely a process worth walking through um, in the same way that you would plan out your student going to high school, you're really planning the best possible way for them to go through college. Um, one of the seminars that we attended many years ago gave the average cost of a two-year degree as $30,000. And that if you completed a two-year degree through the CCP program or the College Credit Plus program, you would save $30,000 off of your degree later. Um, that's incredible. And so like thinking about if where they're gonna go to college later, um, it, it makes sense to start any class that you can take for free. If you know that in two years, they're gonna to wanna to go to this college, make sure that the class you take today is gonna to transfer so that you're not wasting that money um, towards that. Um, but yes, you're gonna apply separately at each college. Um, and then you will upload 
your approval, your acceptance letters from those colleges there. And um, on one of those tabs, uh, like the first or second tab after the parent information, I think it was the first tab, it said what colleges and it had a number. And what will happen is when you have to select that college, you will just search from a list and it will pre-populate that number for you. So you don't have to know all of that, but you can add as many colleges there as you want. Um, okay, and um, that was a really long answer and I don't know how to type that answer, but I'm just gonna put thank you as the answer and you know that I answered it. <laughs> um, and then um, can your student, hold on. So no FAFSA while using College Credit Plus, just confirming, right, that's right, no FAFSA. You'll mess up their, them going to college for real. Um, not for real, but you know, later when they graduate. And can your student do five years of high school, say they are 19, but still enroll in CCP? Yes, and I did that with Mason. Um, so what you need to do with that though, and it's the same answer to the question as the mom that was asking, can my kids start younger? You're asking, can my kids start older? In homeschool world, you are the school administrator. You determine the grade. So Mason um, could have started this in the seventh grade, um, but what we decided was we're gonna wait a year until he's gained some maturity. We're gonna register him because he has one of those birthdays that will allow him to register this way. He has a May birthday. And that's why he has that maturity thing is because he's got such a late birthday that we could have held him out a year and let him go the next year, but we didn't, we put him in at five. So what we did is we held him back and then we, when we applied, we made sure that we applied as a seventh grader um, later so that this year he's 18 all year long and he turns 19 on May, uh, the end of May. So here's, here's the thing. Your child, when you're applying for this, August 1st is the cutoff. So they have to not be 19 before August 1st. So as long as they are not 19 before August 1st, that can be their senior year. And I backed mine right up to it. He's gonna turn, uh, or no, it's not 19, it's April 1st, sorry. As long as they're not 19 by April 1st. And he'll be 18 on April 1st. And then he turns 19 two months later. So they cannot be older than 19 on April the 1st, if that makes sense. So it's a, one of those technical answers. And once you start the clock that you only have so many years, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th. Once you start the clock, that's it, you can't go back. And if you start the clock and you say, well, my kid's an eighth grader this year, you can't go back in three years and go, well, you know, we repeated the ninth grade. As a college credit plus student, no, you didn't. <laughs> you, sorry, you started the clock, you're in eighth grade. So just be sure that when you register, you start that clock um, at the right time. Oh, I feel like that's a lot of information. All right, I, and I feel like I've been talking like blah, 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 as fast as I can. So I'm gonna let you share some more about uh, COTC specific. I feel like I'm, I'm already sharing some of it, but um, I know there's more. So you go ahead, Tony, I'm gonna throw it back to you. All right. Let me get down here to the COTC piece. All right, so a little bit about COTC. Um, as you mentioned, we do have four full service campus locations, um, Newark, Pataskala, Mount Vernon, which is our Knox campus, and also Coshocton. And we also have our um, fifth campus, if you will, which is the online offerings. Uh, we do stress with COTC students to take TAG and OTM courses. They get personal attention. Uh, um, our student to teacher ratio is 13 to one, so relatively small. And they can complete a certificate and or an associate degree while they are attending COTC, even as a CCP student. And we also mentioned concurrent, which is the self-pay option. Concurrent tuition at COTC is one half. Um, our 
tuition is $199 per credit hour, so $99.50, um, roughly $300 for a three credit hour class. We do have um, transfer ready certificate and pathways for our CCP students. The first one is a 15 credit hour pathway. And as you can see, they're all classes that typically um, are offered early on in a college career. Your composition one, statistics, critical thinking, intro to psychology and cultural diversity. That dovetails very nicely into our 30 credit hour pathway, which is that initial 15 credits plus an additional 15 in microeconomics, composition two, ethics, sociology, and public speaking. Typically those would be um, your first two semesters or, or part of your, the first two years of a four-year degree. So those, those also pair very nicely coming into the COTC's Associate of Arts and Associate of Science. Um, if your student is wanting to go ahead and get the first two years of their four-year degree with COTC. COTC offers a college credit plus scholarship. So if your student has not graduated with their degree and they have completed three credit hours at COTC as a CCP student and they have a minimum 2.0 GPA, they enroll in six credit hours or more per semester and they can receive $1,500 for two semesters each academic year for a total award of $3,000 each year. And there's more information um, about that on our website. Student support services that we do offer for our CCP students, we offer the tutoring. It might be one-on-one, -on -one, um, online, and utilizing the Communication Resource Center for writing and speech and PowerPoint presentations our math lab for the math students. And we also have a learning specialist who will work with students with um, note-taking skills, time management, study skills, and then also our disability services um, department, which if your student has that IEP or 504 and you let us know, we will connect you with those folks over there. The disability services is not limited to that. Um, if something happens to your student and they maybe they're um, on crutches or whatever, we also will work with them with that office to maybe be able to get them extra supports that they might need or the availability to um, park in a different location or, or what have you. Registration requirements for COTC, you do have to apply. It is a free application on our main webpage. Um, submit an official transcript. And I know you said you were gonna mention transcripts and what those needed to look like. It must include an unweighted GPA for a college credit plus and for um, COTC, we use the unweighted GPA. Um, I do have another slide coming up that kind of shows you the, the state versus COTC testing requirements. You must meet state CCP guidelines as well as the COTC requirements. You submit your funding letter to us, your homeschool eligibility letter from your school, and then uh, we will have you complete an orientation once your student complete an orientation once we have all of that information. The eligibility requirements, um, the first column there with scores in it, that's the state college readiness scores for ACCUPLACE or ACT and SAT. The COTC college readiness scores are relatively similar. There's just a couple places where there, there's some differences, but if you're meeting those state guidelines, you're meeting the COTC guidelines as well. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, we're not doing placement testing if your student has an unweighted GPA of a 3.0 or higher. Autumn semester deadlines for, for COTC apply by August 17th. You have to do that funding letter, you have to do your application. So obviously you're gonna have that out of the way. Um, we do register students by the first day of class, which is August 24th. COTC has started offering second term courses, which are eight weeks in length. Uh, for those courses, students have to apply by October 11th. 
register by October 18th. And then there's other important dates that we do encourage you to um, maybe look at, print out our academic calendar, um, have it there readily available for you so that you can see some of those other important dates like um, registration dates, the, the last day to drop with no grade, the last way to drop with a, uh, a W grade and when school when the campuses may be closed for holidays and various things my contact information is there um, please feel free to reach out to me anytime uh, the ccp email there's several of us that monitor that email um, we are always available to answer questions and we would encourage you to meet with us at any time are there any other questions at this point there we go i don't see any oh this person wants to know can we have a copy of your slideshow <laughs> <laughs> i think that it's available on the ode website actually i think there's something very similar on the ode website tammy um i'm not sure exactly where it is it is on their website and I will say I did hide a few slides because I knew you were going over the application piece and I also combined a few things the way the state has theirs laid out they start out with an overview of here's the things we're going to talk about and then they go into them in detail and I just as we went through them we went through them right so it, it might look a little bit different but they do have it on their website um this person is saying do you know if the act and sats are being um administered in person i do believe they are back to doing in-person testing um you would want to go to act.org or collegeboards.org or .com i don't remember but it's one of the two it's either um collegeboards.org or collegeboards.com but yeah they are back to in-person testing for those i have a friend that just went maybe a couple weekends ago that her daughters just went and took those tests. All right. Um, oh, yes, yes. If you've got the link to it, share it. Um, someone put it in the chat. I would be comfortable with sharing the PowerPoint if, if that's helpful. Yes, please. If you've got the link to it, go ahead and put it in the chat and um, people can copy it from there. All right, any other um, questions? I believe she means the PowerPoint that we, that I just actually went through. Oh, sure. Yes, we would love to have it, yes. And you said you were going to send some um, information as well so we could actually just connect with everybody right. and I'll also send it to you as yep. well. I'll, I'll email that over to you. All awesome. right, well, um, I just want to say thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, I feel like we went over a ton of information. This is definitely one. I'm very glad that we recorded because um, even though I've been through this several times, I feel like I always hear something just a little bit differently. Um, and so I just want to, you know, encourage you share this with your friends. Um, once we get this uploaded, we will absolutely post the link so that you guys can um, share that with other homeschooling families as well. And um, just say thank you, Tony, for being here and for sharing all of your wisdom with us. You're um, welcome. We are also going to do a um, homeschooling high school um, session right after this. Um, so I'm going to put that link in the chat and uh, yeah, so they can, um, they can pop over to that if they want to. Um, but if there, are there any other questions, COTC specific questions or college credit plus questions that we can answer? Um, somehow we have a few minutes left. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> Deborah just says, thank you, thank you. Going to be in the next session as well. Yes, thank you. And I, you know, I, someone was posting in the chat and she said, I'm just so happy you're not selling everything um, and just sharing this. And, you know, 
um, I just feel like this is like hitting the lottery with your kid's education. You know, you can get so much of this paid for. Um, and those, one of the things that you mentioned was the scholarship. Now, a few years ago, it used to be a thousand dollar scholarship, but if you had attended COTC as a college credit plus student, you received after, once you are a first year freshman, you could receive a um, $1,000 scholarship. And now that's up to $1,500. The one semester of tuition at COTC is like $2,500. So really what you're saying is we will, we will give you $3,000 a year to finish your two-year transfer if you didn't get it done in CCP, which some kids can't. I mean, it's, right. it's not something that every kid can finish that two-year transfer degree. And what a great year this year to do that with COVID. Why would you pay to live on a campus and be <laughs> locked in your dorm all the time? You know, like stay home, finish your two years, transfer it somewhere. And uh, boy, it's, it's just a value when you're thinking about you can get out of your two, the first two years debt free. And that is exactly where we wound up um, with all three of my students that the, at the end of this, two of them have a, one has a two year degree. The other one has three classes short of a two year degree. Um, and then my youngest has most of a two-year degree, but he doesn't want that anyways. He wants to be a firefighter. So I was like, okay, we'll do that, dude. Um, but, uh, you know, just amazing that they could get out of this debt free and not have that burden over them. Um, that's just been such a blessing. So from one very, very grateful homeschooling mom, thank you so much for hosting this tonight and for sharing Absolutely. this information with us. Um, it's just invaluable to our community. And uh, I really appreciate you being willing to do this. Sure, absolutely. All it's right. been a pleasure. Well, thank you so much. You have a good night, Tony. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.